Welcome to another session of uh, Networks Tech Talk. I am Derek Johnston, your host. Uh, and in this episode, we are discussing uh, 5G network readiness for the enterprise. Uh, and specifically, we're diving into options for enterprise networking, uh, the state of solutions uh, and approaches to delivering the next generation mobile network technology. There's been uh, much anticipated and talked about growth and commercial expectations uh, in this uh, in the space. And as of uh, last year, the worldwide you know enterprise private network market was roughly 1.7 billion, uh, and in, by some estimates, is expected to go up to eight billion dollars uh, in the next four years. So, with this anticipated growth, as you can imagine, there are many industry players active in the enterprise network space. Uh, but two global market leaders. Uh, Samsung and Sienna announced a partnership last year to deliver best-in-class uh, end-to-end 5G solutions. So to unpack the opportunity and provide uh, insights and the state of the market are a few of my colleagues from uh, Samsung and Sienna. So today I welcome uh, Amresh Singh, who manages partnerships for Samsung's networks business. Also joining us is Mitch Simcoe with Sienna, who leads industry solutions marketing, and Vinny Santos, who leads solutions marketing for Sienna. Uh, welcome, gentlemen, and thank you for being here today. I hope you're all well. Glad to be here, Derek. Thank you. Happy to be here with you. Same here. Thanks a lot. Excellent. Well, I'm excited about today's discussion, but before we kick it off, just a couple of quick housekeeping items for uh, folks that are joining us today. If you do have questions, uh, we would encourage you to submit those in the Q&A. We will get to them uh, at the end of our session if we have time. Uh, and if you're looking for more information regarding today's topic, uh, there'll be a link to our website, which you should be able to find at the bottom of your screen. So again, thanks for everybody for being here. So, all right, let's get started. Um, and with that, uh, I'd like to get a little bit of a lay of the land. So, um, question for you all is what you know what's the present state of 5g deployments in the enterprise and i guess you know maybe Amrish shall start with you sure uh Derek, thanks for uh the invitation and thanks for setting it up well uh the 5g um, deployments globally have been growing rapidly since the inception of release 15 3gpp specs and and uh, actually started uh uh well, in South Korea, um, the APAC region as well as the U.S. region were the first ones to deploy. Uh, in fact, uh, SKT Telecom in Korea was probably the first one to deploy 5G in commercial sense. Um, uh, in EMEA as well, most of the operators have uh, deployed 5G. Uh, most of the deployments across the globe have been in non-standalone mode at this point of time, non-standalone mode being wherein LT acts as an anchor and uh, 5G is the uh, uh, next uh, joint pipe uh, in EMC mode, and, um, uh, and and in US most of the operators have already deployed their devices available. Most of the smartphones support 5G, the new ones, and um, uh, apart from few exceptions, where uh, if if I uh, look at uh, uh, some parts of Middle East, Latin America, and India. Uh, the only bottleneck has been that the uh, government hasn't uh, released the 5G spectrum yet. Uh, so that's the only uh, milestone which they have to achieve before they start deploying 5G. Um, I anticipate that by uh, in next five years, uh, most of the global markets will have 5G commercial deployments already active. That's on the macro side of things. On the enterprise side, um, uh, most of the uh, wireless deployments and the enterprises are looking at mostly enterprise LTE deployments at this point of time. Uh, but um, yeah, there have been POC and trials which are being conducted by uh, major enterprises in the U.S. specifically uh, with 5G. And uh, the main uh, driving factor for um, 5G enterprise POC and trials in the U.S. has been uh, the use cases, some of the enterprise verticals which need use cases which require higher security uh, threshold as well as uh, performance in terms of uh, enhanced uh, bandwidth and lower latency. Uh, I think with that, I'll hand it over to uh, probably Vini and Mitch to comment further on uh, this topic. Yeah, I think uh, Amrash, you touched a very, uh, very important points and uh, 
it, one aspect that's quite interesting to understand from the from 5G is that uh, it's not just uh, 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 you deploy 5G and it's over. So we've seen like the, the deployments are are, uh, are covering. Uh, we have deployments around the globe, so in Asia, Europe, and uh, Americas, and so. They started with a uh, non-standalone, but there's an evolution to that process. So some countries will have uh, access to more uh, to additional frequencies. We've seen that they will start to move from the non-standalone to standalone to start to add new features like uh, that will allow uh, that uh, will be allowed by the new release, like network slicing or low latency services that uh, will. Uh, 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 allow them to offer premium services with better performance. So, this uh, we have seen that most of the countries they have they already have some type of uh, 5G deployment. But we have seen that this, we're gonna we're gonna have a, a long uh, a long term evolution for 5G as well. So it's not just implemented or, or not or not implemented, uh, but uh, you have like this uh, evolution uh, that will happen in the coming years. And on the on the private side, it's uh, I think that uh, the the proof of concept that we are seeing, they are they pass the stage of uh, just testing the technology. So the technology is there, it's available, and uh, at least for the infrastructure piece, and uh, it's proving to 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 bring the the advantage on the security, performance, and things like that they are expecting. Now the proof of concept are more to evaluate the operational model how I can make it really work with the additional components of my uh, uh, enterprise infrastructure. So it's more like uh, investigating the real operationalization of a private 5G network to just testing the technology. So we are a more mature phase of uh, proof of concepts, as I may say. So it's not just to see if it works or not. They proved that it worked. Now it's how I move from my uh, private LTE to private 5G in a, in a seamless way. Yeah, no, thank you. I mean, you guys make a um, bunch of great points that I'd like to unpack, but I think you hit upon a couple of things there, Vinny, at the end where, you know, talking about the state of of um, the deployment status kind of in the enterprise, and you mentioned, you know, non-standalone, standalone, things like other capabilities that are, are coming to market in terms of network slicing, but in terms of, you know, kind of getting, you know, continue to kind of get us grounded in the lay of the land, Vinny, can you, or actually, maybe I'll point it to Mitch, maybe you could talk about how 5G is currently being used kind of in the enterprise space for these, you know, for, for deployments that we've seen to date. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Derek. That's a, that's a great question. And a lot of it really comes from the whole push to Internet of Things in the enterprise. Enterprises are looking for much more flexibility on how they move devices within their premises. Um, they're, uh, you know, they, they want to, their goal is to make everything wireless. And really Wi-Fi was really never designed to give the deterministic performance, the ultra low latency, the security that enterprises demand to connect to those devices wirelessly. So I'll focus kind of on three verticals, kind of how it's being used. The first is in manufacturing. And it's related to the whole push to smart factories. Manufacturers are really pushing to make their manufacturing lines much more flexible. They're putting a lot more automated robotics that are software control. They need to be able to move those robotics around to change whatever product they're, you know, they're manufacturing at the time. And again, and they really can't rely on a wired network to do that. And again, Wi-Fi, again, does not meet the deterministic performance that you need in a manufacturing plant, especially when you're doing software control, of, you know, very fine, precise, uh, you know, robotic functions for, for manufacturing. So that's kind of one uh, key use case we're seeing. The second is in the healthcare. Healthcare, again, within a hospital, many, many different devices within a hospital are moving to be wireless. And they need the flexibility to be able to move those around. We're starting to see much more smart sensors being used on patients um, and, and the need to be able to connect to those uh, wirelessly, again, with very deterministic performance. Um, so healthcare is another one, a big push on the Internet of Things. The third is an area I'm, I'm, I'm focused a lot on is utilities. Utilities as well are pushing um, to move to... Um, renewable power generation. Those could be wind farms, solar farms. Uh, those could be located in many locations that um, don't have access to fiber. 
and uh, they need, again, that deterministic low latency performance. Very key in renewables is the power generation is kind of intermittent. And so the utilities need to have a very good communication to those sites to ensure that power is brought onto the grid correctly to, to not create uh, power outages. So the, our whole move to, um, you know, sustainable energy, you know, a lot of that, the comms are going to be very key. So lots of very interesting areas where 5G is going to play a key role in enterprise. Uh, back to you, Derek. Excellent. Yeah, thanks, for Mitch. Um, so, when it, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, a lot of, of you know, obviously enterprises rely uh, in, in most all of us do in terms of the indoor setting, right, on, on Wi-Fi. Uh, and, and so a lot has been said, you know, I think in, in the industry, we always like to pit, you know, previous network technology or the latest network technology against Wi-Fi. But, um, you know, a lot has been said about the promise of, of 5G. You know, to that end, you know, it's been it's been hailed as transformative. I guess, you know, for, you know, enterprises that might be listening out there, like why why wouldn't all businesses kind of be investing in it? Uh, you know, and I guess at some point maybe they do. But, but um, you know, for now, we've, we've seen, you know, I think you, got, you mentioned Rich, the the leading industries that have had started to kind of really dive into it. But, um, you know, if you guys can kind of color the, the you know, give some perspective on that, um, uh, you know, of, of why, you know, again, all businesses aren't, aren't kind of all in on 5G yet. And maybe we'll start with you, Amrish. Yeah, so, um, uh, Derek, uh, thanks for asking this question. It's a very important one. Um, I think enterprises have started warming up to 5G. Uh, but there is still lack of clarity on what is true dedicated private 5G, right? Um, uh, the two uh, two KPI requirements which uh, differentiate 5G from other uh, you know Wi-Fi technologies are uh, uh, low latency and enhanced bandwidth, right? Um, so uh, some of the enterprise verticals like manufacturing, uh, which require use cases, like I was reading an article earlier today, um, wherein it requires a very low latency round trip time. Uh, close to less than 10 millisecond round trip time. And that is only achieved with 5G. So in order to, uh, I think, um, have enterprises embrace 5G, it's very important for enterprises to understand the true value of 5G and the use cases as well associated with that. The one, um, I think, gap uh, in terms of uh, enterprises uh, and not fully deploying 5G at this point of time, although the POC and trials are still going on, is the devices space. Wherein, uh, when, I'm, when I talk about devices in this enterprise space, it's mostly 5G, IoT devices and sensors. And that ecosystem is growing slowly, but it hasn't evolved at this point of time fully. So once that evolves, then it becomes really easy for enterprises to, you know, do, deploy 5G end-to-end in their, in their space. Uh, once it warms up and once the enterprises know the true value of 5G, I think they have started understanding already. Uh, then I think we will see a rapid acceleration in 5G embracement from enterprises across the globe. So, so I, I think and... that if I, I can complement Eric, mm-hmm. uh, this, uh, this idea. So uh, I think 5G will be a, a key enabler of uh, digital transformation that uh, most of the industry are, are passing by now. And uh, and uh, it will provide the connectivity that some of those industries need to support this, the, the new use case and application. But digital transformation is a, is, a, is a bigger process, right? You have like, you want to add all this intelligence, all this, uh, uh, this automation to some of the processes that now are manual. Um, be able to collect the analytics, uh, analytics to optimize the, 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 the enterprise infrastructure. If you're in manufacturing, in many cases, you want to just to fine tuning your operation based on uh, specific conditions of sometimes it's in a factory you want to adjust just because the humidity is improved or, or like the temperature change. So you want to be able to create this fine tuning that will be really based on a lot of edge computing, a lot of automation and analytics. So it's a big ecosystem and the enterprise already understood, okay, 5G is the way to connect those devices, is the way to create this value from the, the digital trend that the digital transformation is promising. But as I said, it's a bigger ecosystem that passed by the readiness of the 
the end user or the, the, the device itself. So the, 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 the sensors, the collector, even the, the robots that will be uh, receiving this information as Amres uh, talked about, but also the evolution of the process and the, the, the computing infrastructure, if it's uh, uh, edge computing, if it's in the cloud. So, uh, so then it's, uh, there's a bigger ecosystem that need to evolve together with, uh, with 5G and uh, to make this uh, a reality. But uh, I think that at least from what I hear from the hearing from the market, that uh, this is uh, uh, the direction everybody is going. So adding intelligence to the network, adding more uh, uh, richer connectivity capacity that's, that can support this low latency, security, resiliency, uh, more bandwidth will be essential to enable this new phase of, uh, of the enterprise uh, journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point. And, and, and you know, I guess to that end, you know, there, um, you, you know, as you mentioned, it, I guess in the context of enterprises that have maybe already made the jump into private networking, you know, in terms of their, you know, kind of the digital transformation path that you mentioned. So, again, maybe, you know, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of momentum, right, in um, 4G LTE, you know, CBRS-based private networks. Um for you know, for those enterprises that have um, have jumped in early, you know, can can I, can you guys offer some perspective on you know are there are ways to kind of ease into um, 5G, uh, you know, in terms of of you know one the way that the the specification kind of is being rolled out and and you know equipment considerations and things like that. And Amrish, do you want to, yeah maybe you could sure. um, correct this? Sure, I think. Yeah, sure, uh, Derek. I think this is um, the exact question. I think many of our uh, participants, when we, I was, I and Mitch were in the UTC conference together uh, in Oklahoma, and this was a prime question, which was asked by many of the participants there. That okay, shall we shall we move to LTE or shall we move to wait for five? Right. That was a, that was a prime question, and the the main enabler. Uh, which will have enterprises or uh, all enterprise verticals embrace 5G is to develop products like Samsung has done. Uh, our CBRS radio uh, enterprises can deploy right now on LTE and it can be uh, upgradable, software upgradable to 5G. So enterprises no need to rip and replace the hardware and then deploy 5G. So uh, if the products which are coming uh, on the enterprise front vendors can be, uh, with current deployment model, can be upgradable to 5G without rip and replace. I think that will ease uh, and make it easier for enterprises to make a more seamless transition from 4G LTE to 5G, and that will solve the problem of uh, double investment. And uh, I think that's a that's very key, key point, um, uh, where it, it needs to be clear to all the enterprises that that's, that's the way, that's the model they should follow. Yeah, I think that um, having a, a technology that can be software upgradable, I think that's really easy. The way the enterprise can get into the market, into that market, they will can have like the connectivity they need. They want may not be as feature rich or or sophisticated that they they are planning for their digital transformation, but they can start. They can add all the additional elements, and as soon as the the industry uh, it's uh, has the the end devices available on five G. It's just like a software upgrade. So I think that is a good point, Amrash, that looking to plan your digital transformation journey, adding this uh, initial LTE uh, infrastructure that will be easily software upgradable to 5G, it's a, it's a good way to to start. So uh, I don't think that uh, enterprise need to wait until uh, everything at 5G is completely, uh, their, their, the 5G ecosystem is complete to go into the, to the wireless space. They can start to reap the benefits of having a more a more robust uh, mobile infrastructure when compared to Wi-Fi. It starts to take advantage of some of the applications, and when the rest of the ecosystem is available, they can just upgrade and keep include increasing the number of uh, applications or use case they they can uh, they can address with their infrastructure. Mm -hmm. yeah, just a quick add to comment on the utility market. I think that's exactly what we're seeing the utility market there. They're wanting to start off with 4G LTE as a you know as a migration of their private wireless networks, but they very much want a network that's ready to go to 5G when the end devices are ready. 
um, you know, they want to be able to take advantage of that uh, right away. So I think that's a, a perfect approach. Certainly, we see in the in the utility market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I guess into you know to that end, to, if you guys could provide you know our, our viewers a little bit more context too. I know, um, you know, one of the things that you know Sienna brings to the table, you guys are recognized as a um, you know as, as a the global leader in, in optical connectivity. So, I guess how has you know, how have you guys seen in terms of the, your, your technology solution set uh, and, and market position kind of played a role in, in kind of, you know, seeing as success or, or tell us a little bit about some of the successes you guys have had in 5G uh, in the space? And, yeah, and I, Vinny, I, I guess I'll point that to you first, maybe. Yeah, I can take I can take that one. So at least uh, I can in- introduce the, the the answer and the the Mitch and uh, Amresh can help me to to go a little bit deeper. But uh, when you look through the a five G network or any mobile network, if uh, if we you can easily see that uh, it's a big wired network with uh, wireless access. So uh, the performance of a, a wireless network uh, heavily depends on how good uh, uh, your uh, X hole or front hole, mid hole, back hole uh, connectivity. Yes. So this is where Sienna, working with Samsung, can really uh, help to uh, customer to build the best of the breed. So we bring our expertise on creating the the uh, most advanced uh, wired network in the planet. So from the optical side, now from the uh, X hole transport side. So we are bringing this expertise and uh, and uh, using this together with uh, one of the leaders on the mobile technology. So uh, to create this uh, this network that's at the same time it's open. Okay, you know, we have uh, two different uh, uh, vendors partnering to deliver that uh, that solution. Really focus on what's the best for the for the customer. So you you can align the best axo uh, technology with uh, all the different uh, uh, capabilities that we bring so network slicing with uh, a rich number of interfaces timing and syncing um that's uh, that's uh, some of the the, the requirements there will be essential to implement uh, a 5G network now and keep the, the the infrastructure ready for all the evolution that 5G will pass so if you can uh, you start with non standalone and sometimes using uh, C3 interface for LTE, and then you start to go to C3, you start to go to a standalone infrastructure. In many cases, you're going to be mixing different type of frequencies, if you're mixing different type of, uh, of technologies in the, same, uh, in the same network. So you need a wired infrastructure that will support that. So Siena is bringing to this partnership it's, it's really this ability to uh, offer uh, one of the leading technologies on, a, on that we allow the, the customer to connect all this infrastructure to the to the to the cloud to the to the edge computing uh, and to the, the the core of their application. So I think this partnership is is really benefits not only Sienna, uh, of course, being partnered with a uh, with a leader like Samsung is is really important for Sienna and to to. Uh, uh, increase the Sienna, the presence, uh, the Sienna presence on that market, but also there's a big benefit for the end customer to be able to look at the market and see, okay, I now I have an open solution that can really, that can really be, uh, give me the best of the grid. So the best of the wireless technology, the best of the wireline technology to create this future-proof uh, type of uh, of network. So I think that uh, just summarizing the the benefits, I think, uh, and uh, how Sienna can help on that space. I think that's really uh, providing this uh, this rich wireless connectivity that's really aligned with the existing and future requirements for 5G players. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I think, you know, um, to your point, you know, uh, since you got this enviable kind of market position in the optical connectivity space, um, you know, I think, you know, folks know Samsung's obviously one of the biggest brands as it comes to, you know, mobile devices and display and consumer electronics. Um, but in terms of the, the, you know, the network infrastructure business at Amish I think we've seen that Samsung has been characterized kind of as a, as a challenger, I guess, to, you know, provide additional context to, to, to you know, to Vinny's point on the, on the partnership um, that between Sienna and, and, um, and Samsung, can you provide a little bit of, of an overview of what Samsung's approach is to the network's business and, and, uh, Maybe what's kind of behind the, uh, how how well Samsung is positioned for 5G? Sure. Um, 
I mean, it will be a direct stone mine. It will be a slightly longer answer uh, because we have a 40-year history in being in telecommunication space, Samsung. Um, well, uh, I'll, I'll reveal some 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 details about Samsung, which probably most of the people don't know. We are actually number one in 5G innovation space in networks, with number one position in 5G essential essential patterns. Um, we have 40-year old history in the telecommunication space, Samsung. Uh, we started in Korea uh, with all the three major operators, SKTK, and GU Plus, and we still maintain very deep dive technical and business relationships with them. Uh, then we have relationships in Japan as well. And these two regions, Korea and Japan, are specifically uh, unique in terms of very high dense population of uh, early technology adopters. So if uh, if Samsung has proven the technology in these regions, then it, 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 it's easier for us to scale uh, beyond those regions as well. Uh, with the advent of each G, we have expanded our ge- geographical footprint across the globe. Um, uh, in the U.S., we started uh, with Sprint Network with a one-third of Sprint 4G macro network. And in India, we partnered with Reliance Geo uh, on the build-out of the world's largest 4G greenfield network. Um, the geo network, uh, many people don't know, it's really incredible that it's bigger than the combined Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile network in U.S. in terms of cell sites and obviously in terms of number of subscribers. Um, we started our 5G research way back in 2009, and over the next decade, we have led the industry in bringing the technology to market. Um, in fact, as a matter of fact, Samsung was the first infrastructure vendor launching a pre-commercial 5G network in U.S. and the first commercial 5G network in South Korea. Um, after that, we have expanded our footprint in um, our existing markets like U.S. and Japan, as well as in other markets like Canada uh, and New Zealand. Um, I think it's fair to say that still uh, early stages in the 5G era. Uh, apart from uh, expanding our global footprint, we have, we have actually introduced new technologies to market, uh, like virtualized RAM. And um, I think most of the people are talking about, most of the vendors are talking about virtualization, but we are the first, only, and probably the only one we have commercially launched uh, virtualized RAN in US, Europe, and Asia already. Um, uh, and when we talk about virtualized architecture, um, it's really important to look at both RAN and transport uh, more holistically. And with the advent of 5G, as I think Vinny explained uh, very, very clearly, that with the advent of 5G, the uh, the separation lines between uh, van, core, and transport are really starting to blur. And uh, since 5G comes up with very orthogonal requirements of very high bandwidth, very low latency, etc., it's really important for all the three, all the aspects of the network to work in very units, and that there is, that's where virtualization plays a very key important part. Right. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you both. You, know, you mentioned, um, you know. It, I'm sure you made a really great point there that the kind of, you know, with 5G, uh, the lines are kind of blurring between, you know, core transport and RAN, um, and, and, you know, is kind of the pillars, if you will, of the of the, the overall network. I said that, and, can, and, and Vinny, you touched upon this a little bit. Uh, could you go into kind of what is the relationship, uh, you know, between uh, Sienna and Samsung, you know, at a little bit deeper level, help folks understand? Sure. Um I mean, I, I see CNI and Samsung are really natural partners because we are industry leaders in our respective spaces. And with this collaborative leadership and partnership, we are planning to create best-in-class 5G networks, which are open, scalable, and adaptive. Um, now, the, as I think Vinny can explain it in more uh, detail and uh, clarity, the, the networks are transitioning towards more centralized brand architecture. Uh, it used to be a front hall and back hall network. Now it's front hall, mid hall, and back hall uh, so to make it more flexible, uh, more uh, more agile towards different use cases. And that's where Samsung and Sina partnership really comes together. The work we are doing um, in I mean, we have established a Suwon lab in South Korea uh, with interoperability, interoperability between Samsung, Rancor, and uh, Sina equipment. We also 
planning to establish labs in uh, Plano, Samsung Plano office, as well as in San Jose. The objective is to pre-integrate and pre-validate the solutions together, uh, which will enable faster time to market for our customers and to which will iron out any pre-existing issues which might uh, customers might face uh, at the time of deployment. So it, we are actually making customer uh, life easier for our customers to take pre-integrated solution from end to end from transport and to the radios from Samsung and CNN. Yeah, just uh, just to complement that, uh, some of the the, the aspect that Amrash touched touched on, it's uh, uh, the five G is uh, is not just about more bandwidth, right? We have uh, uh, even in terms of the, the functionalities and the, the features that we offer to the end user, we're gonna have low latency, reliability, things like that are important. But it's also bringing a different way of building networks. So building the wireless network, it's putting this idea of the centralization of part of the run. Uh, the virtualization of components, so it's a big shift on the the way the the, the 4G and the, the networks are being built in the past, and uh, all of all this is really uh, pushed into also an an open uh, an open uh, ecosystem. So uh, we are looking to that having this best of breed, and there's different capabilities that uh, different vendors can bring that will help customers to really evolve the way they are building network. But when you're talking about openness, it's uh, it's uh, we we customer are looking to take advantage of this openness, but they also looking to have something that they have the confidence that they're all the components will work together, will perform well together, and will be simply to deploy and operate. So I think that uh, as Amara said, we ha- our partnership is almost natural because we both believe that uh, the, the the way that customer implement network need to evolve to support 5G. So to bring those new use cases that will increase revenue, to bring this new uh, and the new operational model that will reduce costs, while it's bringing a, a, a different application that support different uh, use cases. So we both believe that the openness and a, a, a richer ecosystem is important. So when we really put it together, this uh, uh, like almost that uh, design principle, with uh, us being leaders on the different parts of the network. I think that this uh, really uh, creates a, a benefit for customers that are looking to transform the network to be much more aligned with the, what the promises of 5G uh, and uh, and can leverage like uh, our expertise in different fields in a way that's pre-integrated, pre-validated without bringing all the complex that some customer may not be looking to to face. Okay, even for the private space, so we can make like almost the easy button mm-hmm. for them to uh, take advantage of the best of greed instead of uh, they need to do all this uh, work by themselves. Excellent. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate you guys' insights on it. That's, that's, uh, I think it's extremely helpful and, and <laughs> you well put. I think the, you know, one of the, the, the bigger challenges, you know, for, um, you know, for enterprises out there is, you know, Amrish mentioned earlier is like, you know, understanding kind of the benefits of 5G, why 5G, but then beyond that is like, then the, you know, how do I do it? And, um, you know, as an industry, I think, to, you know, it sounds like the, the, this partnership is is helping with that in terms of the the easy button, right? You got to have kind of the the end to end capabilities. Uh, people don't want to go out and kind of do the piece parts and, and things of that nature, um, but also having that pre integration work that Amrish mentioned and, and all the stuff that that is involved in the deployment aspects is going to make it uh, far easier, you know, for these enterprises to. Um, uh, to take advantage of of, of the uh, the benefits of five G, so really uh, really appreciate all you guys' insights today and and the discussion. Um, uh, I've I found it really compelling and, and interesting, and um, and really appreciate your time. Thank you, thank guys. You, thank you. Thanks, thanks very much. much. Um, yeah, thanks again, guys. And and so with that, um, just wanted to remind folks if you're looking for more information, uh, we got some helpful links here um, for for more information on uh, 5G readiness for for enterprise networks. Uh, appreciate you all joining us on Network Tech Talk. And uh, again, stay tuned uh, for uh, for next episodes. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.